Hey everyone, welcome back to Full Throttle Driving Academy. I'm Brian. I'm Dana. Today we're coaching Dana. We're gonna do a different format. We've had a lot of requests for this. So as you know, you can send your video and or data to Brian and he will talk you through turn by turn how you can improve and he's gonna do this with me today and I'm gonna actually be able to ask him why is that or why do you think I did that or how can I improve? So I will try not to interrupt too much because the magic is right there. Um, but this should be an interesting session where he coaches me through my time at Button Willow. And what is the configuration? It we're counterclockwise. I had never done this track and I'm in a brand new cup car 991.2 that I've only driven three times. So I was I had a lot of learning to do this weekend. She did fantastic. Also, she's in the time trial group. We are sharing the car. She's going to have traffic on this lap. And despite the traffic, we're coming on to the main straightaway. She's already come through the first corner. She's on the left on the video. I'm in the same car later in the or earlier, actually, in the morning in, on the right hand side. So and time check. <clears throat> we're, we're only going to do one lap, so we don't mm -hmm. want to bore you to tears. But we want you to get a flavor for how Brian does this. And I'm so fortunate to have that. I love when he coaches me. But we're just going to do one lap with mm -hmm. his line, my line, and talk you through it. Great. So you're exiting uh, the final corner. So what do you see right here, right away? I see that I'm not nearly far enough to the left. Yep. I didn't track out. And, well, and But you couldn't have, right? You would be normally right here. Yeah, why couldn't I? Because you've got traffic ahead. Oh, well. Right? You were preparing to pass these cars, so true. your exit already, this is coming into her fastest lap, which we recorded, it ends up being a 204 lap, which is really fast. If she had been out here, she'd probably be at this point, probably going more like 75 miles per hour. And if she didn't have these cars to deal with, she could have stayed all the way to the left and she would have probably gotten a 203 instead of a 204. And I'll admit mm. this situation right here intimidates me a bit because I know I'm faster than they are. I've driven with them before, but I'm on the straight, the longest straight we have. And I'm thinking, can I get by them before turn one? Cause I don't want to go into turn one neck and neck. So I'm, I'm a little probably more intimidated about this situation than most. Got it. And that's great because you're a very safe driver. You're predictable and everyone likes being out there with you, even when you end up kicking the crap out of them. <laughs> no. It's all very collegial. These guys are great. So let's see what the exit would look like on a fast lap. Look to the screen on the right. This is me coming out onto one of my fastest laps. I'm exiting all the way out there and you Beautiful. track all the way out on the left to the curb. And now we're going 86. I said 75, I'm a little further down the road than she is. But nonetheless, she's she's positioned well to get a good run down the straight. And she even still tracked out a lot. See, you could have had two more feet to the left, but that's, we're nitpicking. And she's going 81 and I'm going 86. All right, so she's she that means she just came out of the last corner two to three miles per hour slower. Okay. Just a tiny bit. So but now you main you, straight. You got to pass these cars. Oh boy. So bye bye one. You're not going to get them here. So what are you thinking now? I'm thinking I can't get them. So I'm just going to have to take what I think is the best line. I think you're going to probably have to wait till after turn one, or do you have to wait till after the S's? I don't remember. Let's see. So this is a threshold braking zone. So you're very good at threshold braking. You're going to come in. Good, you get down to the apex. You will track all the way out. At the very end of the apex, you're going 82. So let's see mine. I'm gonna come down and threshold break. Hit the apex, same thing, track out. At the end, very similar, right? One mile per hour faster. That means you're very quick on turn one. Okay. Right, so we're not going to even... You call it turn one. Most people don't get that because it's the turn before oh, the straight. It? So most people call the next one turn one, but well, just so you okay. know that's... Well, that, it's well that was turn one, actually. That was turn one because oh. we came after the straight. We turned right. Oh, okay. Sorry. I usually do call the last corner turn one, but we're not going to confuse everybody. That was, <laughs> what is it called? Sunrise or something like that? Sunset? Mm -hmm. Who cares? Anyway, coming into the S's, right? 
The trick with the S's is you want to start far left and you want to be patient and have a late apex. You want to kind of arc the car in gently and you want to have a late apex because this is a slalom. Anytime you have a slalom, you want to be a late apex on the first corner, the first cone if you're at an autocross. And that sets up a straight line through the rest of it. You're really quick through here. You're going 114 on your entry. But I kind of, I entered too early. I, I turned mean, too early. I, I guarantee you, if you look at most people in time trial coming into this, they're going to be going like 105. Going in at 114 is... But I still turned it, in too it, early. It takes some courage. You did turn in tad early. Five feet, maybe. Not, okay. not, not, nothing crazy. So let's watch the S's here and see how fast you go. That's great. You're maintaining 117, 115, 117, 116. You're at 125. Yeah, but, but you're great. And your line is perfect. She's hugging the left right here. And then she's going to drag the brake a little bit. You're, by the way, already a half a second faster than your previous lap. Um, your previous personal best. She's going to drag the brake, correct? Yes. And then she's going to come around the corner and give a blip of full throttle before the braking zone to set up for a hard left which is called Star Mazda. So brake, flip the throttle, hard braking. We could probably stay out a tad longer. And further? Uh, yeah, you, you wanna be probably a little, you wanna start turning in maybe he, you know, at the end of the arrow and stay a little bit more to the right and get a later apex because you have 500 horsepower. You wanna really get a lot of rotation and get the car turned a lot on the entry so we can get to throttle sooner on the exit but it's, it's very good. Let's see me coming in the S's. Coming in at, Same car, so I have so, no excuse. Yes, it's not, I mean, oh, so you, 114. 63, 67, I don't know, really close, guys. <laughs> Nine miles per hour. But it's, you know, late apex on the first one, run over the curbs. Now we're gonna get up 129, 125, you know, 28. Same exact line though, check it out. I'm, I'm doing this. She's very coachable. We went over this earlier. Drag the brake, come around, lift a full throttle, brake. Now I'm doing, I'm not even all the way out on the curb. Um, um, I'm gonna stay out just a tiny bit longer than her, I think, before I turn it. Maybe 67. not. 67. Yeah, we have exactly the same line almost. And by the way, she's phenomenal at driving the line. So I'm not gonna have much to talk about, except for a couple places where she kind of, what I call, what you call crabbing. Where she kind of kind of inches over toward the apex, she kind of gets a little cheated. impatient. And instead of waiting longer, turning sharper. Me impatient? <laughs> so min speed, this corner is like incredibly slow and takes patience. So great. Come all the way out. Perfect. The the trick is how fast can you get to full throttle? Because this straightaway is fairly lengthy. So you can hear her there. She slipped the wheels because this car just has ridiculous amounts of power. But she's already at full throttle. She's up to 115. That's great. I'm gonna come around. My min speed is only one mile per hour faster than hers. Nothing to write home about. I'm gonna track all the way out too. I slip, spin the wheels as well in second, second gear. Third for third, me. I third, think. third gear. And full throttle. Yeah, we don't have PDK, so that was something to get used to again. <clears throat> She's, she, we're probably almost equal speeds. I think there's a big ripple on the pavement. We could look at that and compare. Yeah. But see there, right there. Did you hear that? You lifted just a tad. God, he catches me all the time. See right here. How do you notice this? This is a big arcing right-hander to head up toward Phil Hill. You really got to carry, it's almost full throttle. It's a light lift right near the curb there but you're lifting pretty early. Yeah. See, I, I heard it. You went down to 116 and you're way before the apex. Caught me. So that's a place to pick it up and hustle. So let's see what you do. Yeah, you're kind of just coasting. Then you realize, okay, I'm past the corner. Nothing scary happened. Let's pick it up again. You're slowing down way too early there. And for, for this part, what we want to do is just be out more. You'd want to be out here a bit more and then gradually move back to the right. You're kind of pinching off and that's why you had to lift a bit. And the key is, yeah, you want to run up the hill in a straight line, which you end up doing. You're in a good position here. 
Don't you want to aim a little more to the left than that arrow is doing right now? Yeah, you probably want to be more like that. Okay. You and I think what you're doing is you're predicting that you need to be there to line yourself up. I'm just puckering. It's a yeah. scary hill. The hill is scary. The corner before that is scary because yeah. it's bumpy and you slow down a little bit. So let's see if you don't lift as much, how fast okay. you can go through there. I think you were in, you were in like 118, 116. Let's see where this goes. See, I'm going 130. So this area right here, you were going 116 to 118. This is 130. Wow. You will pick up a full second. All right. If you just hustle through that. Okay. And we'll be going by the time we go up the hill. Still full throttle, full throttle, full throttle. I start braking about right there. Look at your G's compared to mine too. Uh, it's hard. I wish I would show you the number, what it is. That's yeah. the max. But you're further out than I am on the G's. So I'm at 125. You can see where we are. We're not, we're, we're just starting to go a little bit uphill. You're at 112 and 99 right there, right? Right at the curb, 99. I'm at 10, let's say I was at 108 wow. or so. That's, that's almost 10 miles an hour. Yeah. So that's, that's where you can just hustle that segment going over the hill. I bet you're going to be fine. Oh no, you slowed down way too much. <laughs> Sorry. This is where if we had a right seat in the car, I'd be in the car, like screaming at her right now. Like, go, go, go. What the hell are you thinking? Are you go. Doing? What are you doing? Yeah. You slow down to 60. Um, this is like over the, the min speed over this is more like 73, 74. Okay. So again, 13 or 14 miles per hour. And we didn't require you to track out. I didn't track, track out because I was going too slow. Yeah. That, that whole sector right there is worth at least a good solid second. Good. So let's see, over the hill here, we'll probably go yeah, 75. Check all the way out. And then this is another area. And we hit the curb now because we tracked out, we went a little faster over the hill, we're at 114. You're gonna come around 105. 105. <laughs> But right. you know, it's just that's room just, for improvement. Yeah, it's just it, it, the line though. Look, it's perfect. So you're hitting the curb. Most people don't do that. You're, you're, it's you're nailing the line. It's just hustle at this point, getting more confident with the limits of the car. You know, balls, balls. You don't need testes to have balls. Okay, now you're gonna come to the entrance of Riverside. How much do you break here? What do you think? Too much. That's actually pretty darn good. You, I think you coasted a lot and maybe light braked. Light bra is it broke maybe. or braked? Oh. oh, okay. You're going min speed 94. I think you could have hustled more before you got here and then break, maybe use the brake a little bit harder. So you could yeah. have, you could have done more full throttle, waited longer, break a little bit and still be at 94 okay. on your entry. Got it. I'm going to hustle it. I'm breaking there already in a straight line. I can straighten my hands, light brake, just scrub the speed, keep the car as flat as possible. Probably get down to around 94, 95. Yeah, so one mile per hour quicker. But I think the hustle between those two points was more, yeah, right? Yeah, gains a lot. Now you're gonna be really, okay, so you slowed down a lot there for some, you kept slowing down. That's another area where you can just kind of pick up the pace one mile per hour per lap until you get more confident. This corner, for whatever reason, it you gain traction about where you are, but then you start to lose traction like about, it's really weird. Like right about here, I feel like the car gets unsettled and it loses traction. Really? It, it, the pavement changes, the surf, something happens and then you get really squirrely. But then when you get back over about here, you can pick up the throttle. It might be that we're kind of going uphill and then we crest a hill and the camber changes, but about here you can end up going around like 110. But over here, you have to kind of wait and be patient and slow down. That's what I was noticing anyway. So you're coming around, 95, good line, let it drift out a bit. Good, now you didn't need to lift as much there. You slowed to 93. You can carry probably good solid 105 okay. through there. And then we're really going to talk about this braking zone. So I want to pause it there. Okay. Let's see what we're doing. Going 
See, I had to lift right there because it gets unsettled. About 108 through the, the curb. And now we're looking at the, what is this called? Bus stop. Mm -hmm. I've been telling you, break straight line. In, along this curb, get parallel, and then break in a straight line. Be patient. Turn a little sh sharper on the entry to the bus stop and run over the whole curb and then you can get to throttle sooner and you can carry more like 80 miles per hour through it. I think you're gonna slow to somewhere in the 60s. <laughs> so see, so this is crabbing. See how she's, instead of running parallel to the curb, you kind of you kind of want to be face going like, maybe like, oh, that's a bad line. You kind of want to aim here break in a straight line and then arc in and hit the bus stop a little sharper. She's kind of letting the car crab over here, mm, which means so that me by off. the time you get Can't there, get you have to, to turn sharper and you have to slow down more. So you want to widen the corner as much as possible, but being over here, and then you can turn more gradually and carry more speed because you really want to huck it through here. So let's see what you do. Yeah, you get down to um, 59, right at the thingamajigger, mm -hmm. the curb. So you break in a straight line along the curb. It's nice because the curb, you can just run parallel to it. And by the time you get in there, you can be going 70. So that's just another hustle, right? Yeah, a lot of time so to 11, be gained. 11 almost. miles per hour. Yeah, that's at least it. Because this then sets up a really fast uh, section. So you'd probably pick up an additional probably a full second on Riverside through the bus stop. If you can pick it up even four or five miles per hour, you'd probably pick up a good half half a second to a second on that. Because now when you track out, you're going 52. Now you've got to wait for the car to accelerate again. What's this one called? Clubhouse? Mm -hmm. uh, good pace here, good line. Good, you coasted right there early. You're preparing for the slowdown rather than going, going harder. Yeah, and then slowing down. I'm going as hard as I can, and then I'm doing a light brush of the brake. Some of the cup cars were going a little longer than you were at full throttle, and then they were coasting through the corner. Um, I, I always prefer to just go as much full throttle as possible and then do a light brush of the brake, but that's cool. just driving style. Okay, so you come around. You hold full throttle through there. I've stayed left because I exited faster on Clubhouse. So it pushed me out further to the left than you were. Mm -hmm. So you had time to get back over to the right more than I did to prepare for this corner. Mm -hmm. So your line for your speed is actually perfect. Speed. When you get five miles per hour faster, you're just naturally going to stay. You're going to be pushed out more to the left. You will not have as much time to scooch back to the right. But nonetheless, that's good. You could have done what here? You tracked out. All the way, right? And then you could be going 100 instead of 96. And then still we want to be parallel, yeah. right? Yeah. You thought you might go off or what? I don't know. You, I just messed it up. I think, is it consistent or do you think maybe, I don't know. I didn't see I it. think it, I was consistently not going, going out. Going all the enough, way out? Because yeah. this is sketchy. A lot of people do go off here. I wasn't worried about going off because it's straight, but I just think I was in the moment anticipating the next turn and getting a little oh. too excited. Okay. So we'll come around the corner, check out, sit parallel, yeah, go down the hill. Around that full throttle there, go up the hill, cut, cut it in hard to the left up the hill. Okay. You're going to be pinching a little bit. Yeah, way too far 64. Left. Do you get to full throttle? Almost. I can feel you're at 75% throttle there, something like that. Your line is perfect, coming up the hill, great. You got the car slowed down, you broke in a straight line, you straightened your hands, you didn't upset the car. Just at the crest, you slowed down to 58. I slowed down to 67. So you're just, you know. Yeah, it's hustle. It's just a little bit of hustle. But your line's really good through here, very nice. See, the key on this one is you you already had figured out on your own. You can't overshoot this corner and track all the way out. If you come if you come in too deep on this corner and shoot wide, you ruin your exit on the straightaway on the next corner. So what you're doing is perfect. You're going to actually sacrifice this corner 
and you're gonna stay more to the right so you can have a good exit feeding onto that lung straight away. Okay, so what you just said, I'm sacrificing this corner mm -hmm. so I can be over to the right, feed onto the bottom. That stuff doesn't go through my head. Like I'm just driving. Is it natural for that level of precision to be going through your head and anticipating, oh, I'm gonna give this up so that I can be, I don't uh, know, to some extent I can see that happening, but right now I'm not thinking about that. You must, because look, okay, you did get a little to the left, but you're not, a lot of people would be way over to the left now and they would, because if this was just a corner and then you were on a straightaway, you would track out all the way to the left, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, So right. Sure. So because you already know there's another corner coming, you got to be back right. over to the right. So you already are thinking about that. You're just not aware of it. Okay. You did cheat too far to the left. See how you're way pinched off now? Early apex, yeah. You're going to be way early on this corner, which means you're not getting to throttle soon enough on the exit. So yeah. that's another half a second. You want to stay to the right. I'll show you what it looks like. You come over the hill. You run over this curb entirely. Scooch back to the right. And then hit your apex about right there, about, uh, about yeah. two thirds of the way through the corner. I'm way early. Yeah, you're hitting it about a third, almost halfway through. Okay. And because of that, you're going 88 or at that point. 88, but I think I'm a little further behind you, but let's see. This is tricky, right? This is so Downhill hard. I breaking. went off this course so many times here. That's perfect. Why, did, why would you go off course though? Because what I happens? come in too hot and I don't have the room to break before I just end up going off. Once I learned the track, because this was my first time on the track. Once I learned it, I was able to handle that better. I think they call that one x-ray. But um, I, yeah, but I you're, flew off it four times. You're perfectly though breaking in a straight line. So many people try to curve the car and then hug this and then stay all the way to the right and brake while they're turning their hands mm -hmm. and they fly off the track. You're braking in a straight line. You're carrying your speed down the straightaway. The reason this is so tricky, this is super bumpy and then it starts going downhill when you start braking. So the car doesn't want to slow down. Okay. And, and no one really realizes it, but that is a steep downhill braking zone. Yeah. And it takes forever to slow yeah. the car down. So I do the same exact technique you do. Break right there, get it slow, get it slow, get on the curb. I'm a little further left on the curb than you and hug it a little mm -hmm. tighter because you can use the banking to your advantage. And you think about that, the banking. When you're in the car, you're thinking, oh, it's banked. I can. I mean, I do because I feel every time I'm in a session, I'm feeling every corner. I'm testing what it, what's the angle of the curb? What's the angle of the track that hits the curb? It's, it, it's I don't banged, tend to think and, about it like you do. I just kind of feel it, but you're really you've, thinking about this stuff. I think about it when I watch my videos like this, you can see like this is, this is going uphill. We're going up a hill. It's kind of banked. So we want to stay a little bit tighter to the left because we want to use the banking. Wow. But then when you start going down the hill, what's going to happen? Go right, right here is the top of the hill. Yeah. When you go down the hill though, can you slow down as much or not? No, it's going to be faster. And then it's a tight left on a downhill slope. So you not only have to turn sharp, but you're braking. So the car wants to just spin out. So you have to get some of your braking done in a straight line as you start going down the hill. So you have all four tires braking in a straight line to set mm -hmm. your speed. You the can't video be... doesn't do it justice either. This is such a tight corner. And the, yeah, the yeah. angulation and the elevation is very different. But that's good. You run over the curb. You can be two feet more to the left. You went too wide there. See how you're still, you, you went too fast. You, it's only 36, but your car is washing out. It's pushing. How can you tell that? You, I can, you're turning the wheel, but the front of the car is sliding. You can just see. I mean, I'm sure you're right. I just don't watch it at speed. You'll you see the car wash out on you. Watch brake. You wanted to turn more, but it kept. I don't know how you know that. I think you're right. I'm sure you're right, but yeah, you I don't had, know how you can tell that. I think you had too much brake pressure. I know you had too much brake pressure at the end of the braking zone. Instead of trail braking and releasing it, you had too much brakes. You were asking a bit too much of the front tires. So it just sort of slid off. And then as you release the brakes, you regain traction and then you, you, you could make the turn. So you just needed to brake like a five hundredths of a second sooner and then start trail braking in a little bit sooner than you did. 
but that's good. He recovered really well. Coming down the hill, it's, it's very bumpy. Let's see what we do here. Full throttle coming down the hill, similar line, bumpy, full throttle right there. Mm -hmm. You waited a long time to get to full throttle. Why? Because this curb. In this car, when we hit the curb and you hit the gas, it totally upsets the car. So you just have to be prepared that the wheels are going to spin and you'll get used to it. And I had to get <clears throat> used to that corner because that was a tough one for me. I felt it's not off camber, but it kind of felt off camber to me. I always, I had to get used to that one. That first time on the track was tough. It's a hard corner. And then you'll get up to speed track all the way to the left. Perfect. This is a hard braking zone. I think you waited a little, I think you're soft braking. Then I think you need a little more force on the brake pedal. I think stay you need on the gas longer and give it more brake. Yeah. I think the pedal in this car is so hard to push. I, I think you need to just go a little deeper on full throttle and then get a little more aggressive on that brake pedal. You turn in a little early there, but that's perfect. And then when you check out, great. And I think this is a 204 lap. Great job. 204.48, you actually did 204.43, some, somewhere along the line. Okay, so overall, if somebody is sending you their video and their data, and you do exactly what you just did with me, except they're not sitting next to you and they can't <laughs> kiss you like I can, um, then do you wrap it up with, in general, I think you need to track out more, get to the gap, get to throttle sooner. Tell us how you wrap this up with your clients. I usually, yeah, do a summary. I usually do a little bit more annotation. If I'm coaching somebody, I usually record it by myself. I don't have the person on the phone with me like we're doing here, but I know you like this format. And then I send the student the video um, by Google Drive. I also post it privately on YouTube, so they're the only ones that can check it out. They review it by themselves. And then we do a phone call afterwards to go over any questions that they have. I also like to do this same format for a pre-track pre preparatory call. If you send me, upload your video for a track you're, you've been to before, you're going back, we can review the video from your previous time and help you improve drastically so you're really prepared to get your top time of day and your personal best. That was awesome, B. Thank you. And um, I, I think you all can see that Brian mm -hmm. really has a way of knowing exactly where you should be, what you're doing wrong, how you can improve and articulating it. And I just find his coaching to be amazing. And our feedback has been really great too. So if you've got feedback, please put it in the comments section and we'll look forward to seeing your videos as well. Thanks everyone. We'll see you at the track. Bye. Bye.